Hey everybody, 42nd vlog of the year. Uh, this is Childhood Story Monday. So um, this one though, it's going to be a little different. Um, I'm planning on doing an entire week of vlogs about uh, religion. So um, it, because it's something that I think about all the time and I just, I've never really gotten the opportunity to just bleh, just, just vomit out my thoughts to the world. So. <laughs> Uh, here you go. But um, today's childhood story is going to be a little bit different because it's going to be talking about the religion that I grew up with. Um, so it's not going to, be, going to be a particular story or a particular experience that I had that was, oh, that was funny or like anything like that. Um, it's just going to talk about um, growing up in the Christian church. And I'm also going to talk about my current views and uh, how they grew from what I was taught to believe when I was growing up. Now, um, if this doesn't interest you at all, I'm sorry, um, but uh, I'm not a douchebag. I'm not. Uh, I'm pretty open-minded. Um, as long as you remain civil in any discourse that we have, we can pretty much. I, I'm open to talk about anything involving uh, religion or philosophy or theology or anything like that. So, um, I don't consider myself an authority on the Bible or atheism or uh, any other belief system but I believe that I'm fairly knowledgeable uh, more knowledgeable than most which is not knowledgeable at all sadly uh, most people don't even think about uh, religion or the existence of heaven and hell or the existence of God or what they believe about anything so um, but I on the other hand think about whether or not God exists and heaven and hell and death pretty much on a daily basis but I'll get to why that is uh, in this vlog, actually. So, um, like I said, if this doesn't interest you, I'm sorry. But uh, I, I think that this is a discussion that everyone needs to have or think about, at least. Um, you know, what you believe and why. Um, and uh, Pet Peeve Tuesday tomorrow will be about... Um, it'll be in about another religious topic. Uh, but uh, I'll try to keep it from getting too heated. Now that I gave you that two minute introduction, um, I grew up in uh, the Christian church. Of course, you guys might know by now, I mentioned it several times, that I was homeschooled growing up. I have um, very conservative um, Christian parents. Um, my mom's side is Catholic. Uh, my dad's side is Protestant. So they're both within the Christian um, genre. That sounds weird to say because it's incorrect. <laughs> um, so, you know, I've just, I just grew up when I was homeschooled, and the only social interaction I really got was with my family, who were all Christians, and uh, when I went to church, which was full of Christians, uh, I never really, you know, gave it a second thought. It was just what I taught to believe. Like, um, I went to, uh, I went to a number of different churches. Um, actually, my parents stopped going to church because of my brother, uh, my brother has autism, so he uh, he got pretty he got pretty bad for a while. He he would you know throw tantrums in public. It was kind of hard growing up with actually. Uh, it would, we would go to the grocery store and he would just you know explode. And we'd have to one one time we had to uh, drag him out of the supermarket literally, and uh, I, we were stared at by everybody. But that's a story for. A different time and that happened all the time uh, and so you know similar things would happen at church and so my parents were like well we can't go we'll just drop you off John at church and you can go to Sunday school and we'll pick you up after the service at noon you know so um, I went to church every Sunday and almost every Wednesday till I was like in eighth grade or something and I didn't think anything of it I was always taught that God exists, um, and if you don't believe that, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and he died for your sins, um, if you didn't believe that, and if you didn't um, accept that truth, um, and, uh, yeah, you, you were going to hell. That's just why I believe. I was like, oh, yes, of course. This makes total sense. And, uh... I'll talk about that later, but um, it wasn't until I was like in 8th grade, I think, that I started, well maybe it was 7th, it was more like 7th grade, that I started thinking, something is really wrong with this. Something just does not make any sense. 
And it's because I had never really thought about it before. I just sort of accepted it. And, uh, you know, I was starting to... I was like 13. I was starting to become a teenager. I was starting to rebel against the ideas of my, you know, <laughs> parents and things like that. Um, so I guess it was kind of associated with that. But um, I started thinking, you know... I, I started asking, like, these really tough questions. Really tough. Yeah, it, It's kind of funny looking back on these really tough questions because they're just things that I naturally think about now. Just, I mean, thing, things that, you know, non-Christians would look at Christianity and think, like, why they believe that? Wouldn't this happen? You know, like, just logic. Anyway, I would think things like, uh, you know, uh, why is pain and suffering necessary? And, of course, I know the Christian argument against that now. And I don't agree with it. But, um, you know, I just kept thinking about these things like, you know, uh, like, you know, God seems kind of selfish. Why is it always all about him? Uh, why did he put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden? Couldn't he have just let Adam and Eve live in bliss forever? Uh, why is free will such a big deal? Uh, you know, uh, why, why, how could a loving God send people to hell? You know, things like that. Uh, you know, God creates people that he predetermines will not accept him as their Lord and Savior, so he creates people knowing that they will go to hell. Why would anyone do that? That's kind of a douchebag move. You know, they, these thoughts started, like, cropping up in my head when I was in seventh grade or so. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to not believe in Christianity. I didn't want to believe that life just stops when you're dead. I did not want to believe that at all. Uh, because that's a depressing thought, and it still depresses me today, even though I think it might be true now. Um, you know, I just, I was just like, well, you know, this sucks. Basically, this was my philosophy when I was in 8th grade, ninth grade. I was like, this sucks, and I don't like it, but I want to believe that this is how it is at the same time. Because heaven, the idea of heaven is so appealing to me was so appealing to me and still is so appealing to me that I was willing to overlook all the things that I had problems with, like hell, um, in an effort to go there someday. Um, basically, I became what is known colloquially as a fire insurance Christian. And this is a, <laughs> I don't want to call it a stigma, but a negative term that some Christians might use for someone who uh, practices Christianity only to avoid hell. Now, um, I didn't hear this term until years later, but that's basically what I was for, you know, uh, beginning of high school and things like that. Then I went to a uh, Christian private school in 10th grade, and I took a seminary-level Bible course. And I thought before that I had problems with the idea of God and hell and things like that but once I took that course um, and I learned more about uh, what was actually in the Bible um, you know and uh, all these things about homosexuality and just things like that and at the time I, I regret to say this but in 10th grade I was pretty opposed to homosexuality I thought it was a sin I thought it was a choice that you made, and I'm, I'm now I'm ashamed to say that I thought that, because um, now I believe that that's completely not true. All of those things are just not true, uh, but at the time I was like, this is this is the way it is, you know, because this ancient book says so, and um, you know, but I still had problems with the idea of God, and I was angry, and I was like, why are so many people going to hell? This isn't fair. And I just remembered I was just so angry, but I uh, made 100 on all my, <laughs> not 100, I made A's on all my Bible tests because, you know, I knew, I knew the Christian arguments for everything, but I could not accept them. And I still can't accept them. Um, I think you're beginning to see a pattern here. Um, and it wasn't until I got to college, I graduated from a Christian private school. Um, and, uh... When I came to college, uh, I looked, I searched immediately for a church nearby to get plugged into. 
because I was like, I have to, I have to be a part of this community. It's the only thing I know. It's the only thing I know is to be around Christians. I know what to expect. I know they're going to be nice and semi-fake in their happiness to see me and things like that. And, like, you know, we can all just, you know, be in our Christian bubble together and just... Because I, at the time, I was, like, drinking, smoking, drugs, sex. I'm not going to do any of that. And, uh, yes, I came into college a virgin, and I was actually... I'm not ashamed to say this at all. I was a virgin until I was 21 years old. There you have it. Um, and the reason for that is because of my up... I mean, I mean, come on. If you're sitting there shaking your head like, how could you be a virgin until you're 21? It's really easy. All you have to do is be homeschooled and be brought up to be a conservative Christian. And um, now there are plenty of people, not plenty, but there are people who were both of those things growing up and went crazy way earlier than I did. Um, not that I went crazy, but you know what I mean. Um, but uh, it's, it's just... It's very, you, you're, I really don't want to use the word brainwashed, but that's kind of what it was. Um, I never thought for myself until I, you know, like I said, until I was in junior high and I was just rebelling against everything already. Um, you know, so uh, when I came into college, I was like drinking, drugs, smoking, sex, that's not for me. And so, because I was scared of it. I was scared of that whole life. It was scary to me because, you know... Growing up in that kind of atmosphere, you were, you're surrounded by all these conservative Christians that tell you the same thing. You know, like, you know what happens to people that do meth? Look at these pictures, you know. Uh, you know, look at these, you know, look at these post-abortion, you know, pictures. Look at these, you know, like, this is what happens when you do sinful things. And so I always, that always stuck with me, even though in the back of my head I was like, that's probably not true. They're making a mountain out of a molehill. Um, I was still like, well, I'm not going to find out. I'm not going to find out what, you know, what happens when you do those things. And uh, so, um, anyway, I, <laughs> I went to this church here for years uh, when, I, when I started college. And uh, I... Um, I made a lot of friends that did not go to church, and uh, they were like my, I went to parties with them and stuff, and I did end up getting drunk um, many times, uh, but then, uh, reverse burp, sorry about that, you guys know the story already, um, I, I started like, uh, you know, being like, I really need to, I really need to get back on track. Um, no, I didn't get too crazy or anything. Like, I, I was still a virgin, so, you know, things didn't get too crazy. Um, but um, then I, I went back to church, and I was like, okay, I'm going to live with, I'm going to live in a house with Christian dudes. And uh, I'm going to go to church every Sunday. I'm going to become really involved. And even though I don't believe it, um, I thought to myself that, there, because I still had so many questions. I just, I, and this was, this was stupid of me. But at the time it worked out, and I was okay with it. I thought, well, you know, some things I don't have to know the answer to. It's okay not to know the answer to some of these tough questions, because nobody had answer, nobody had given me an answer that I was able to accept. Uh, you know, for the past eight years that I had had them. And so I just came to the point where I said, screw it, basically. I'm just going to, you know, move on with my life. And I believe uh, that, you know, Christianity is the truth. And that's it. End of story. And uh, so I lived with uh, three other Christian guys. Um, I went to church <laughs> every Sunday night. This was, this was a year and a half ago, okay? Um, this was recent. And, um, I, uh, I, uh, I went to this, uh, thing called Monday morning prayer. We woke up at like, we met at like 7 a.m. Monday mornings and we had group prayer, which I hated. I hated it, but I was like, I'm going to force myself to do this. Um, I had a small group, uh, Bible study, 
meeting like every Thursday night, I believe. And then I was involved in other church activities throughout the week. So it was like, it was kind of, I don't want to say it was a nice time, but it was a time that I felt involved in a group um, that I felt like I was, I had, you know, actual friends who I had things in common with. But what I came to realize about a year ago was that it was all an illusion. It was all an illusion that I created in the hopes of, you know, heaven and God actually being real and something that I would be able to participate in, you know. Um, it was all just because I wanted that to be true so much. Um, and then about a year ago, I said to myself, I was like, I can't keep doing this. This is bothering the hell out of me. I just... Because it, it's just, you know, you can only ignore things for so long before it just gets way out of hand. And I was ignoring the part of my head that's like, this is bullshit. Because there was this, there was, there's this like, not an actual voice. Shut up. It's not an actual voice. But you know, a voice in my head that was like, this is bullshit. This doesn't make any sense, John. Why the fuck are you doing this? And it would say things like that very profanely, like I just said it. Um, and I would be like, yeah, sh shut up, this is this is okay, it's okay for now. And it got to the point where it just wasn't okay anymore. And I thought, this is unacceptable, you know what? And I was like, I'm going to live life how I want to live it. And uh, you know what, I've, I've searched for the truth for the past nine years, and I have found nothing to convince me that the things in the Bible and the things that Christianity espouses are true. And so, then I told myself that I was officially agnostic, which sounds kind of like a, uh, it sounds kind of like a um, contradiction. <laughs> officially agnostic. Um, you know, and uh, it's hard because um, I just hung out with a lot of those church people tonight, actually. Um, they, I mean, I hang out with them every once in a while just because everyone there knows my name. You know, I can walk around and be like, oh, it's John, you know. But, uh, uh, I, I mean, they, they all still think that I'm, I mean, I don't know what they think. I don't know what they think of me. But I'm pretty sure they all think that I'm just a Christian who doesn't go to church with them anymore. And, you know, things like that. Uh, but, you know, and I feel like, like those three guys that I lived with. I feel like if I told them, hey, I'm not a Christian anymore, I feel like they would think that I, like, I deceived them or I lied to them somehow because I had conversations with all of them where I would give them advice on how to live their Christian life, you know, or I would pray with them or I would, uh, you know, I would, I would do stupid stuff like cite a verse to them. Because I know a lot of Bible verses. You just, you can't escape it if you grew up with that. You just know a lot of Bible verses. You know, and I, I feel like if they found out, they would be extremely, uh, not extremely upset, but disappointed, and they would feel deceived, which was never the intent. Because, you know, when I had those conversations with them, I was genuinely trying to be a, a Christian, you know, and to think like a Christian, and to do all these things that I just didn't need to do. And so it wasn't insincere that I did those things, but, um, you know, I don't want them to be mad at me. Um, and, you know, the same thing goes for my parents. My parents don't know my religious beliefs. Uh, and I, I dr honestly, I dread the day when I tell them, hey, according to the Bible, your son's going to hell. Because I don't believe in those things. You know, I dread the day of telling them that. Because I remember, you know, when I believed in the things that they believe in. Um, if I found out that someone wasn't a Christian, my heart would just sink. And I would think, that person is going to hell. Oh my god. Like, that's, that, it, it would upset me. It would upset me greatly. And I cannot imagine having that feeling for my son or something like that just like you know my son is going to hell you know I just can't imagine that and so I'm like you know what I mean 
maybe I can just, and that's where I am right now. I'm sort of a closet agnostic. Um, most of the people I know are, are Christians. Most of my close friends are not. Uh, so that it, it's not like it's, you know, uh, tormentuous or anything. Is that a word? Tormentuous? Um, but, you know, I, I really regret not telling my parents about that. And, uh, it's hard. They have enough to deal with with my brother and everything. So I just, I don't know how I'm supposed to tell them. And I don't want to get into arguments with my mom and dad about that because, I mean, they are, they are, this goes without saying, I mean, they are very smart individuals. And I don't want to get into a uh, heated debate about religion with them. It's not that I'm scared that they would prove me wrong or anything. I'm scared that it would become like a, almost like a grudge type thing. I mean, it, it, it's weird because my mom's side of the family is Catholic. And she was, she was brought up Catholic, but she converted to Protestant Christian um, and if you don't know what the difference is between Protestant Christian and Catholics, it's that, uh, basically that Catholics believe that the way that you get to heaven is by good works, um, in addition to faith in Jesus Christ. Um, and, uh, Protestant Christians believe that it's faith alone in Jesus Christ, and it doesn't matter what you do. You can be an axe murderer and accept Jesus before you go to, you know, get executed and you'll go to heaven type of thing um and you know they, they have that difference between them and sometimes it brings up rather uncomfortable situations at the thanksgiving dinner table you know and i don't want to have that with my parents so that's why i haven't told them and i don't know when i will it's got to happen sometime but you know anyway I didn't really want to get into the whole, like, what do I do about my parents thing, but it kind of just went in that direction. So, uh, yeah. That's basically the entire history of my life and my religious views and things like that. Uh, now, I haven't really explained my current agnostic views, um, but this video is about 22 minutes long. Um... I can briefly explain why I'm not a Christian if you're interested. Uh, so, um, <laughs> I bet you're watching it now and it's like 34 minutes and you're watching me say, I will briefly explain it. And you're like, ah, there's 12 more minutes. You didn't briefly explain anything. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, basically, the reason that I'm not a Christian and the reason that I don't know what to believe is because... Um, Nothing, nothing within Christianity makes any sense to me. It just doesn't make any logical sense. Uh, every time I think about it, I get mad, or I think to myself, that that's not fair, or why would things be like this type of thing. Um, basically, my belief is, is that um, God may exist, but if he does exist, there is no way no way that he is like the God of the Bible. Um, basically, my problem lies with the Bible more than the idea of a deity or the idea of uh, heaven and hell or things like that. Um, my problem lies within the biblical interpretation of such entities. Um, because I, if you want my honest opinion, and if you are a Christian, you may get angry that I said this, but I believe that God, that the biblical God is just a complete and utter douchebag. That's just how I see it. He, it's like, it's like he's just a massive troll. It's like, he's like, he, he gives us free will, but then if we don't use it exactly as he commands us to, we go to hell. You know, it's just in. It's just like you can just imagine the -la 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 like song right after that. It's just like, it's just like here's free will, but you gotta use it as I say to. -la 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 -la, you know, like that's just how I imagine God to be. Um, you know, it's like there's just so many examples like that that I'm just like, what? Did, what just happened? I was like, why? Why even? And, and I think my main problem with the idea of God and the idea 
biblical Christianity is basically this is what everything boils down to. This is what God's plan, God's plan is what I have a major problem with. God's plan. Um, God was in existence before we were, obviously, according to the Bible. Now, um, you know, this is all contingent on if what the Bible says is true, then this is the situation. And that situation is what I have a problem with. God created us, right? Um, he created us, he, well, he created Adam and Eve, um, and then, like, they were in this perfect place, the Garden of Eden, and, um, then every, then God, it was in God's plan for that to get fucked up. Um, the, so, like, he could have just had Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and, uh, you know, just God has his companionship, which apparently he had angels before, you know, people. So I don't really understand, you know, it has to do with the fact that humans have free will and angels do not. So we are superior companions to the creator of the universe. Anyway, um, so he creates us, but apparently Adam and Eve living in bliss in the Garden of Eden is not good enough for God. So God decides, hmm, instead of having this situation in which everyone is pretty happy, I'm going to put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the garden and I'm going to with the with the no with the knowing with the knowledge that putting that tree in there and allowing Satan to tempt Eve into eating the apple is going to bring about thousands of years according to the Bible thousands of years thousands of years of trials and tribulations and Billions of people being sent to hell for eternal suffering and damnation and pain. Meanwhile, a small percentage of those people will come up to heaven out of their own free will and worship me for eternity. So, you've got one situation in which everyone's pretty happy. Adam and Eve are pretty damn happy in the Garden of Eden. God is pretty happy. I mean, nothing's really shitty's going on. All the angels are pretty happy. Uh, Satan's pissed off, but there's nothing anyone can really do about that. Then you've got this other situation where, you know, billions of people are in heaven. They're pretty happy. God's really happy because he has billions of people with him that chose to be with him. On the other hand, you have quadrillions, quintillions, Googleplexes of people who are miserable for eternity in the depths of hell, screaming out in suffering because they did not choose to believe in a God that there is no evidence for. And so I look at those two situations and I think, why the fuck did God choose this clearly shittier situation for everybody except for him? And so... That's where I draw the conclusion that God is a massive douchebag. I said massive, but massive douchebag. Where God is selfish. He is, you know, he did all this shit for him. What the, like, you know, I don't want to get too disrespectful. But that's the way I see it. And the reason that Christians, in my experience, the reason that Christians accept all of that is because... When you grow up Christian, and this is what I want to end the video on, when, when you grow up as a Christian, because I grew up as a Christian, so I know, I know that this is what they all think, because it's what I thought. And it's what people I know that are Christians still think. You're thought to think a certain way about things. You're, thought, you're, you're taught to logic through those situations where it's like, why did God do this seemingly evil thing? You're taught to think of it in terms of, well, wait a second, God is perfect, and God is the most perfect being that there ever was or ever will be, and who are we, maggots of the earth, to question his motives? It's a very self-deprecating philosophy to have. It, it, everything, every explanation I've found that Christianity has for difficult questions like why would God do this 
have this self-deprecating element to them. Like, really, who are we to question the mysterious ways of God? Um, <laughs> to quote Proverbs, we are but pots herds among the pots herders. Anyway, oh man, my screen saver came up. I've been talking way too long. <laughs> okay, it's back off. Uh, did you like how I quoted Proverbs? Anyway, uh... <laughs> Uh, if I ever quote an Old Testament verse, I'll get a comment saying that it, the New Covenant nullifies it. And so, well, then why is there an Old Testament? Why do we still have it? Is it just for context? Anyway. Um, so, the self-deprecating elements is in all Christian explanations. And it always boils down to, well, we just have to trust God and his master plan. Can I just say... No, I can't say that. I won't say that. I really wanted to say, screw God and his master plan, but I won't say that. I did just say that, but I, was, I wasn't going to say screw. <sighs> Calm down. Okay. So, you know, it's, and so everything is, it makes sense around that. Like, well, we just have to have faith. We just have to trust in God, and we deserve nothing but punishment. Every, every explanation that Christians have or any tough question is based on that philosophy. So it's hard, it's hard to break through that. It's hard to break through the, no, you're wrong. We don't just deserve punishment. You know, no, you're wrong. God isn't this unquestionable, you know, authority that, you know, you have no right to ask why he's doing the things he's doing. Um, and, you know, so that's, that's the big problem I have with Christianity and what I've had a problem with for years and uh, I find no way to justify the God of the Bible being in existence um, yeah so okay like I said 32 minutes it's uh, I didn't briefly explain anything but I will continue these discussions later this week um, if you guys just hate this, then let me know in the comments, I guess, and I'll, I won't, I just won't talk about religion ever again, but, okay, I'll see you guys later, have a good day.